This is One on One. You're looking at Dr. Kevin Herman, vascular interventional radiologist at the Interventional Institute at Holy Name Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, interventional radiology is? Uh, it's a, a subspecialty of radiology uh, that we use uh, imaging for guidance to perform minimally invasive procedures. Easy for you to say. Right. Uh, <laughs> the field has grown dramatically in the last 10, um, five years what? It's about 20 years old, at least, the field, but in the last uh, at least 10 years. Uh, tremendously. It's one of the keys to, I, I wrote this down, I was getting ready, it avoids large incisions and major surgeries. Is that too simplistic? Um, uh, that's, all, that's all true, although simple. Um, most of the procedures that we do, uh, most people are familiar with cardiac catheterization where we go through the uh, femoral artery right. in the groin to get to the heart to look at the blood vessels there. Right. Uh, similarly, we can just do that to get to any organ in the body. Um, when you got into this, mm -hmm. okay, where was the field and is it where it is today? Um, the interesting thing, the really interesting thing about this field is, uh, is that everything that we do is based on one simple technique, which was uh, really called the Seldinger technique, which the was what? Seldinger technique. Is that named after someone? That's named after somebody, a physician who basically was able to get into a blood vessel using a very small needle and from there just continued to sort of grow that entry point. Uh, in order to have other catheters and other devices, such as stents or balloons, be, be placed into the artery uh, safely. That so hasn't changed? That has not changed. I, every dictation I write after every procedure uses that same technique, whether we're using something as simple as uh, IV contrast dye or some very complex brand new stent that just FDA approved with you know, drug coating on it, uh, all the same technique. Name some of the new procedures. Um, well, it's interesting that some of the procedures are uh, I was actually doing a little bit of uh, research also for the segment. Um, there's this one new procedure that we have, uh, which is called radio embolization. Radio is, emboliz embolization. Correct. What and is it? And what that is is actually we go through the blood vessels uh, directly into the liver arteries, and that's really to treat uh, liver tumors, whether it be a primary liver tumor or more commonly a metastatic a liver tumor, usually patients who have colon cancer, most common place of uh, metastases will be to the liver. And so what we're able to do is we're actually able to selectively go into the blood vessel that feeds that area of the tumor, uh, and we also take advantage of the fact that the artery is the one that actually supplies the tumor. Well, what, hold um, on, why would you do that instead of surgery, standard surgery? Well, surgery, oftentimes many of these patients are, are not surgical candidates. Why not? For, usually because they have multiple uh, lesions or multiple tumors throughout the entire liver. That's one very important reason, and uh, we're able to really hit all of these uh, or blast all of these tumors uh, either very selectively or really more globally um, through the blood vessels. Give me another procedure. Um, some other procedures include uh, thrombolysis, breaking up uh, oh, blood clots. Say it again. Thrombolysis, which thrombolysis. is breaking up blood clots, which usually form in the deep veins in the leg. Um, and again, that's a technique that although has been around for quite some time, we've really refined it, where it used to be sometimes three days in the ICU dripping this special uh, clot-busting medication through a catheter, just dripping it in the vein, just breaking that up, to now sometimes same-day procedure, send the patient home that, same, that very same day. Now, we were talking about this before we got on the air, PAD, peripheral arterial disease. Sure. What is it first? And then the thing you said to me that really threw me off was you said a lot of people don't even know they have it. Sure. What is it, and how could you not know you don't? How could you not know you have it? Right. So peripheral arterial disease is uh, basically blockages in the blood vessels um, that go to the periphery. So if you think of the body and the blood vessels as one big highway, there are major blood vessels that go down to the right. legs and to the feet. And uh, what can happen for various reasons, diet, um, uh, patients who smoke, patients who have diabetes, um, and just family disorders that allow uh, cholesterol to build up, different types of plaque to build up in the blood vessels. And oftentimes this is actually asymptomatic, meaning patients don't know they have it. Uh, one of the symptoms could be calf pain when they walk, uh, but they attribute it to arthritis sometimes. Um, it can actually be on the realm all the way as far as having a developing ulcer or some sort of a growth that doesn't go away on the feet. And you don't treat it, what happens? If you don't treat it, what happens? Um, basically, what can happen is you can, it can actually lead to limb loss, theoretically, and those patients that have 
what we call critical limb ischemia. But I think what's more important about it is that it's a marker for other blood vessels that go to other even more important organs, uh, for example, the heart and to the brain. So if a patient is diagnosed with peripheral arterial disease, they ought to seek uh, care for, from a cardiologist, perhaps, to look at the blood vessels that go to the heart. Well, be clear, what, what would you do? What's the treatment? So the treatment, depending on how severe, uh, we always start off with lifestyle uh, modifications. So that would be diet, exercise. If oftentimes these patients are smokers, stop smoking immediately. Uh, After all, so you're sorry for interrupting, doctor. You know, we're talking about the latest technological clinical advancements, right? Mm -hmm. And so many of your colleagues in the last few days were doing a lot of medical and health segments. So much of it comes back to smoking. Yeah. Still. Still. Unbelievable, but sad truth. Is, I don't know, I'm going to open up a Pandora's box <laughs> as to why, but it, its effects on so many levels right. are just so devastating. It, it directly affects, obviously, the known risk of lung cancer. Uh, and you're not which, even talking about that no, right now. not even talking about lung cancer, but within, within the blood vessels, it, it, it just causes this inflammatory response as well that uh, is just the body does not like. Okay, okay, stop the smoking. What else? Stop the smoking, exercise as much as possible, um, and then there's medication therapy. So there's medication directly uh, to treat the cholesterol levels, uh, to treat patients that have high blood pressure. You have to make sure the blood pressure and the cholesterol are at normal levels. Um, and then we can talk about other medications, for example, if somebody's having leg pain uh, because of it, there's some other medications that we can give to sort of increase the blood flow, better the circulation, if you will, that uh, can do it. And then after all that, if we're still having issues, mm -hmm. symptoms, um, we can go easily to procedures to open up those blood vessels. Interventional radiology, uh, peripheral arterial disease, so many complicated radio embolization. We've just touched the surface. Dr. Sure. I want to thank you for joining us. So come back in the future and give us an update, okay? Absolutely. Dr. Thanks. Kevin Herman, I want to thank you for joining us for one-on-one. -on -one. Stay right there. We'll be right back, folks, right after this. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, Dr. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSENG, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. The law firm of Gibbons PC. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.